One member of the inner bar, Paul Webster QC, has called on legislators to take the necessary steps and introduce a Legal Profession Act in the House of Assembly. The suggestion from Webster QC came on September 17th when he gave a historical assessment of the BVI Law Fraternity, highlighting that the practice of law in BVI has expanded exponentially since the 1980s. He recalled that he was a 12th lawyer when he arrived in the 1980s. When I came to this country, because we are celebrating the 30th year of the IBC Act, when I came to this country in 1980, there were 11 lawyers. I was the 12th lawyer. There was no resident judge. The judge came here twice per year for two or three weeks per visit. And within that short time, the assizes was disposed of, and then he or she went on to the civil matters. There was no high court courthouse. We, shared, we used the Legislative Council chambers. A lot has changed since then. I can't count the number of lawyers. When I came, my senior, Dr. Todman, took me to meet all the other lawyers. If that were to happen now, I would know where to start with a new lawyer in my chambers. <coughs> So we have expanded exponentially. The work has expanded. In the old days, we didn't even have a code of ethics. Eventually, we got one through the OECS bar. But we didn't have a code of ethics. We didn't need one. It was a very personal bar. We have come a long way, and things have changed. There is much talk of a legal profession act. It has within it the disciplinary powers for dealing with lawyers, and many other good things. And I urge those of the House of Assembly who are present to do what is necessary to make it into law. Maybe our Attorney General could, give, could help to give it to us as his going away present. <laughs> we do need to modernize the legal profession, my ladies and my lord. Meanwhile, Director of Public Prosecutions Wayne Rajbansi says the Office of Public Prosecutions is now on a solid foundation, alluding to improvements ranging from case file management to operational cost reduction. Rajbansi said the office has achieved a 75% rate of conviction. The Office of the DPP has from inception recognized its obligation to account for its performance to the people of the territory. The evolution of the organization over the past two years convinces me that all the creative methodological systems that were implemented are now on a solid foundation. There may not be a need for any further radical surgery, but refinements it can do it from time to time. Tremendous strides have been made in the areas of case file management, policy formation, court prosecution, capacity building, and operational cost reduction. These changes have catapulted the organization into a higher stratosphere, where prosecutors are performance-driven, achieving tangible results. The overall rate of conviction throughout all the courts is 75% at this time. Advice and vetting of matters from submission to return is within 10 working days. The operational cost was reduced by approximately 38,000 US dollars. All staff received in excess of 15 hours a year in training, and our community prosecuting initiative has diversified the prosecutor's approach from pure jurist case processors to problem solvers and institutional builders. The Office of the DPP's annual report for 2013 has been accepted by the Cabinet and will, in short thrift, be tabled before the Honourable House of Assembly. I invite everyone with an interest in the organisation to read the report once it becomes available. Rajbansi, however, called for the enactment of audio-video link legislation, out-of-court disposal for criminal matters, and admission of formal evidence into court proceedings. The audio video link proposal. This proposes the use of the technology to allow persons to participate remotely in court proceedings from the prison or a designated prison. 
the Turks and Caicos Audiovisual Link Ordinance Chapter 208 and the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court Practice Direction Number 2 of 2014, which took effect on the first day of March 2014 for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, are aptly suitable to this territory. The audiovisual link will be used for administrative appearances and proceedings prior to trial, such as bail hearings, pleas, directions, and pre-trial applications only. The use of technology will result in time and cost saved transporting remand prisoners, creating a better access to justice. Secondly, the out-of-court disposals proposal. Arising out of the attachment of a criminal justice advisor in 2013 to the office of the DPP, a proposal was made to introduce out-of-court disposals for low-level criminal offending. It cannot be disputed that not every offender caught by the police must be prosecuted in a criminal court in order to administer a just outcome. The methods of disposal consist of cautions, which are official warnings, conditional cautions, which are an official warning coupled with the requirement to take action, such as pay damages, and youth variation of final cautions, requiring the accused to perform some work. This method allows for quick and simple, far less serious offenders to be diverted from the unnecessary appearance in a criminal court. The time and the expense to the Royal Virgin Island Police Force, the office of the DPP and the court will be considerably reduced. Chief Justice, Her Ladyship Honorable Dame Janice Pereira's feature address at the opening of the new law year of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court was simulcast from Anguilla throughout the OECS. A special sitting of the High Court here in the BVI was also addressed by Attorney General Honorable Christopher Malcolm, Her Ladyship Justice Nicola Bayer, other members of the Inner Bar, and the President of the BVI Bar Association, Arabella D. Iorio. <laughs> 